Hello, this is Brian Casey of The Imaging Wire. We are here at SIM 2024, the annual meeting of the Society for Imaging Informatics in Medicine in National Harbor, Maryland. Got a great panel for you right now. We are here with uh, Matt Lundgren, uh, Dr. Matt Lundgren. He is Chief Data Science Officer at Microsoft. Matt, thanks for being with us. Uh, Jamin Wondering, Principal Product Manager at Microsoft. And Travis Richardson, he is Chief Strategist at Flywheel. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having us. So uh, day one of SIM just wrapped up and lots of great content today, lots of great discussions on the floor. One of the really cool things about SIM is it is so collegial and it really is a community. Matt, anything that you kind of saw here or experienced that you thought really stood out? Yeah, I think, um, you know, a lot of people are talking more seriously about uh, digital transformation, trying to prepare their infrastructure for what they are anticipating is the future of AI. Um, obviously, we've been talking about AI at this meeting for a really long time. We've been on the forefront here at SIM, but I think you know now we're starting to see the large language models, the opportunities, not just in the clinical space, but the, the automating the workflow space. And uh, it requires a pretty robust data infrastructure. And again, this sort of idea of how do we move to the cloud? How do we make our data interoperable? How do we prepare ourselves for the technologies of the future? Yeah. Jamin, how about you? Anything really interesting that, that you saw here? I've had a lot of conversations about data usage um, and data rights. Are you a custodian? Are you an owner? Are you a steward? Um, so a lot of conversations about how to be able to leverage data and what's appropriate ways to leverage data. Travis, how about you? I, I would uh, second everything Matt said and, and maybe add the multimodal dimension, you know, combining imaging with other uh, classes of data to get a more holistic perspective on you know, operation or, or your patients. Now, uh, one of the big issues here at SIM and, and in past meetings has been AI adoption and how do we, you know, kind of ramp up AI adoption, make clinicians feel better about using AI. What are, what are some of the, the right data and tools that we can use to get clinicians comfortable with using AI regularly? I can start with that one. Um, so I, I oversee a product called Empower, and I get two main questions often about AI. One of them is, will this work well at my institution, and how do I make sure it continues to work well? And the second is, um, how can I actually prove out ROI? How can I prove out utility of the actual AI? Um, and so being able to have a product that can actually bring in reporting data and AI outputs and be able to merge those together allows you to be able to not, not just see the utility, like is it useful, is my turnaround times different, am I having better quality or less quality, um, but then also being able to, to take a look at the data and be able to say, does it work at my institution? If I compare the radiologist report with the actual output of the AI and be able to build some uh, concordance to be able to say, is it accurate, is it not? So there's a, I think the tools that we need are going to be ones that are going to be able to help really prove it ROI um, and also prove utility and make sure that they maintain and they don't drift over time. Yeah, Matt, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think what we've realized is that those institutions that have moved far ahead in the AI space have recognized that um, not all these models generalize as well as maybe they were uh, working at other institutions that had implemented or maybe were as part of the, the training data. And so... In that process, we have to have a way to monitor these models over time. It, it's a tricky problem, and I think without the right data infrastructure, it can be hard to develop the cohorts, the test sets, and to kind of track that concordance, as Jamin mentioned, over time. Um, and one of the ways to do that is just to see how often does the radiologist read agree with the, the model output. And um, I think there's a pretty sophisticated approach that Empower has taken to, to achieving that. Now, uh, Matt, you mentioned Empower. Jamin, can you talk a little, in a little bit more detail about Empower and, and, and kind of what it's about? Yeah, so Empower is, we call it a clinical analytics, and we use the word clinical as opposed to operational because it allows you to be able to take unstructured data and be able to drive insights from that unstructured data. So not just the metadata and the associated order data um, and report data, but also to the unstructured. Um, there's really three main capability sets of the application. The first one is going to be indexing. So we'll take the unstructured reports, index it, and make it available for search. And you can do advanced searches and build out cohorts. You're able to do a bunch of uh, advanced search capabilities and maximize positive findings, things of that nature. The second capability set is going to be quality control. So how can I uh, help drive quality at my institution looking at the unstructured data? So we'll take all the imaging data that comes in, the report, clinical documents, and we'll run about 180 different uh, NLP algorithms against those reports. And then we can serve that up in different dashboards for 
follow-up recommendations and critical findings and notifications and uh, mismatches on particular reports. And so we're able to take that data and we're able to then serve it up in consumable and usable ways for the clinician. And then the third capability set is analytics, where you can combine both of those together. You can take your operational data, combine it with quality data, and you're able to bring in uh, additional data from whether it's AI observations from imaging or whether it might be um, another data source and be able to put that all together uh, to be able to really drive insights and information at your institution. Great. Now, uh, Jim, and you, you talked about the importance of Empower for clinicians. Travis, can you talk a little bit about it? You're with Flywheel. Can you talk about what Flywheel does and, and then maybe dive into a little bit more detail about the importance of Empower for, for, for researchers? Sure, absolutely. So uh, so if you're not aware of Flywheel, it, it, it's a we're a software platform that enables research and uh, you know, collaboration and, and, you know, oftentimes that's AI based work. And as we talked about earlier and, and Jim just went through uh, the, the, it's, it's more than just the images. So you have unstructured reports, those become metadata that help you better understand the images. Uh, you start to add, go beyond that, add patient metadata like conditions, procedures, drugs, other context about the patient. Now you have a much more holistic idea of uh, you know the 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 context of, of your of your uh, analysis or your AI model development, um, and so our system allows you to organize that data and, and kind of maybe back to Matt's point earlier about sort of the the scaling challenge. Um, building a model is is actually kind of the fun and easy part. It's all the data management uh, issues there, and so that's really where we focus. We sit on top of the Microsoft platforms. We can consume data from Empower and others to 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 you know, kind of create that holistic perspective and then enable the uh, development and evaluation and even evolution and comparison of, of you know, future models against a, a you know, well-documented, database sort of uh, set of metadata. And it, it seems to me, just kind of from watching from, from the periphery, that AI has, has become really important in terms of research and with things like drug discovery and things like that. Why is that? Um, well, you know, broadly, there's you know many many challenges remaining in uh, in healthcare, as as you understand, and, and you know, so the the AI opportunity, you know, allows you to sift through that information so much, uh, you know, more completely, more you know, the depth of the data, um, speeding up the process, you know, when time critical situations. Uh, there was a panel I think Matt was on earlier, and the the concept of you know re resolving stroke issues, you know, very time sensitive kinds of things. So sifting through a vast amount of data quickly, um, and then synthesizing what matters is the most important thing. So if you're evaluating a new model that does that, you need to have uh, data in place where you can evaluate the you know how effective that that is, and that's kind of where Flywheel would play. And then we help scale that up by working with Microsoft uh, to to you know to make that something you can scale at the enterprise level. Can you talk in a little more, more detail on, on the level of collaboration between Microsoft and, and Flywheel and, and like specifically what you guys are doing together? Sure, I'm happy to. Um, so, um, so Flywheel as a, as, you know, started out as kind of a, a more of a classic research data management platform around reproducibility of science and, and sharing and reuse of data. However, in the context of AI, that the, the scale demands have become pretty substantial. So you've, you've got uh, organizations going from sort of labs and departments into you know, real enterprise level deployments. And so for a company like Flywheel, where we're good at the domain knowledge and the, the, the uh, workflows and, and you know, the, the algorithms and that sort of thing, um, you know, our, our sweet spot is not the enterprise scaling. So Microsoft um, has helped us in a number of ways. One is just you know, world-class infrastructure that scales in the cloud, but also our, our whole business backplane uh, for the, the platform is also enabled by uh, Azure. So we, you know, how we you know, enable, uh, stand up and manage uh, you know, our billing operations, that sort of thing are all, uh, uh, you know, in Azure. So. so one of the other trends in AI that's kind of developed over the last year or so is the rise of, of these things called foundation models. Um, Matt, can you talk a little bit about what, like, what is a foundation model and, you know, why is it important and, and what does it do with multimodal data? Yeah, um, so at, at its core, a foundation model is really just a large self-supervised pre-trained model. Typically, uh, the things like you've seen ChatGPT or uh, Llama 3, these are text-based models, right? So they tokenize text and do next word prediction or next token prediction at scale. And when you get to very, very large scales, uh, we found that there's some really useful behaviors that occur from, from, from the training of these models. Some of those things you may have experience with use of ChatGPT, uh, where the, you can have a conversation, right, about a topic or about a, a, you know, a document or something that you're 
interested in sort of exploring. Um, and it's an incredibly powerful technology. We've even found that there are capabilities in foundation models that um, give us the sense that there's internal representations of medical concepts. And you may have seen some of the headlines about these models doing relatively well on board questions, for example. Um, and so as we start to think where this is going next, and many people, including myself, was really excited when uh, the GPT version that was able to interact with an image was released. Uh, because those of us in the imaging community uh, were really tantalizing, you know, it's a tantalizing idea to be able to say, can I have a conversation with my image? Could I ask it to draft a report for me? And I think many of us in the community recognize pretty quickly that despite how much they know about medical information uh, in some of the text domains, they don't really have as much information uh, that they've been trained on in the medical domain uh, as far as imaging is concerned. So for us, we're really excited about where the future might be going as we interact with these models with natural images. What would the future look like if we're able to interact with them uh, with, with medical images? And so um, I think that's a topic of discussion around, uh, around SIM today and uh, where we think the future is heading. Cool. That's really, uh, really exciting to see how that develops. Um, let's, uh, uh, Jamin, if you could talk a little bit about Empower, we double back over there. Can you talk about um, how are your customers benefiting from the, the partner ecosystem that you've built up around that? And um, how can they, you know, build out their own AI quality programs? Because, you know, monitoring AI quality has become so important. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say Empower is a really synergistic tool and it can be sold and one plus one equals three. Um, so case in point, if we use some of our clinical applications that are Microsoft Nuance, you have PowerScribe, which is the reporting solution, and then you add Empower to that, and you get quality on top of your reporting. Uh, follow-up Manager is another application that tracks follow-up recommendations. If you take the tracking that um, is really great with Follow-up Manager and you add Empower follow-up follow NLP algorithms um, and auto closures, you're able to have a lot more robust solution. Um, Flywheel is another great example of that where uh, Empower is a clinical application and we have a lot of data inside Empower. You're able to build cohorts of patients and export those to Flywheel and start that research process. So Fly, uh, really Empower is a synergistic tool that sits very nicely alongside other applications to be able to really increase their effectiveness and their usability. Great. So we're kind of almost at the midpoint of the year. Um, let's. Uh, I'd like to finish by asking each of you maybe what we can expect to see from you know your area of expertise uh, from now through maybe RSNA. Travis, can you tell us like what what do you think we can expect to see from Flywell and the research sector uh, going forward? Sure, uh, you know so we're we're uh, in addition to the things I mentioned earlier about you know sort of hosting and scaling the platform. There's you know pretty exciting uh, capabilities in the platform, the Empower uh, capabilities, for example, but the language models, the open AI, the ability to serve open, open source models. So from a flywheel point of view, um, moving your data into that cloud infrastructure also unlocks access to a variety of services that can be used to explore and develop further multimodal models and then you know further linkages to you know data lake infrastructures and similar kinds of things you know we're excited about Microsoft Fabric for example um, and some integration points that we're exploring um, so those types of things you know more enterprise scaling more uh, interconnected uh, you know use of leveraging the you know the services and functionality available from from Microsoft Jamin, um what do you think we can see from empower uh, and Microsoft in, in, in that area I think Empower is really going to continue to grow into a lot of AI quality programs and build tools related to that. There's a, an incredible amount um, of AI algorithms and tools that different uh, institutions and hospitals can have, but really being able to track drift, track accuracy, uh, utility and ROI is continually a problem. And so Empower is looking at building new solutions to be able to address those concerns. And uh, Matt, uh, I'll let you finish. Uh, words of wisdom for the rest of the year. Um, I, I think kind of back where I started, I think this is the first uh, sim in a long time where um, I think the technology is starting to meet uh, the, the willingness to prepare for the future. Um, uh, again, we've had a lot of starts and stops with AI over the years, but I think we're finally in a place where adoption is happening at scale um, and folks are recognizing that the pace of innovation uh, necessitates sort of a platform cloud-based solution. All right. It's very exciting. All right. Well, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Matt Lundgren, uh, Jamin Wonderink, and Travis Richardson for uh, being with us today. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Signing off from SIM, my name is Brian Casey.